Hello adventurers, my name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the sixth part of our race series, if you want to look at it that way. We're going to start covering the Halfling. The Halfling is a relatively unique playable race in D&D 5e, simply because it's usually just used for the memes, I guess. I don't, I don't know anyone who seriously mains halflings, and I know a lot of people who play d and um, There are a couple here and there, but they usually just pick them for either flavor purposes or because they have a certain Zbashu build in mind, but it is a pretty strong race overall, and there's a handful of the sub-races that really can elevate it, and it has a handful of unique feats that are attached to it that make it a little bit superior overall, but it's... I, I think it's a lot to do with it's not as flashy, and there's a lot about it that many consider to be quite safe. And people don't usually play D&D with the intent of being safe, you know? So maybe that's why, and if you are playing with the intent of being a safe character, then there are technically better races to go with, depending on how you define it. Um, in any case, doesn't really matter so much for this video, but um, yeah, we're going to be covering the Halfling, which is found in the Player's Handbook. Let's dive right into them by first taking a look at their naming conventions. I gotta say, halfling naming conventions are probably my favorite in all of D&D, maybe with the exception of humans of course, and maybe lizard folk as well now that I'm thinking about it. But they're up there, reason being they're really simple, they don't play with a lot of weird syllables, it's pretty much very similar to humans. So, Alton, Ander, Cade, Corin, Eldon, for male names, and for female names, Andre, Bree, Callie, Cora, you know, it's, it's really, really simple stuff. And then their family names, of course, Brush Gatherer, Good Barrel, Green Bottle, High Hill, you know, it's really simple stuff. It's really nice. If you've been listening for a while, you know I'm rather opinionated about character names, and I, I like it when they're easy to pronounce and easy to remember, and I've been in games where everyone was like, Sylvan, Sildon, uh, Silis, whatever, you know, it's like, uh, okay, keeping all you straight is going to be a little bit of a headache. In any case, you know, I like them. Um, their naming conventions are relatively similar to humans in the modern day, you know, first name and then a family name. So just bear that in mind. Now let's take a look at their traits here. In terms of age, halflings reach adulthood at the age of about 20 and generally live into the middle of his or her second century. So they're quite long lived, all things considered, but they do mature at approximately the same rate as humans do, at least for the beginning portion, but it would stand to reason that long lived halflings would be, you know, um, fairly common given their safer nature, I would say, or luckier nature would probably be a better way of putting it. In terms of size, they average to be about 3 feet tall and weigh only about 40 pounds. Their size is considered small as a result. This is kind of where the whole halfling dart meme becomes a thing, and it's rather effective because carry rate weight in D&D doesn't make a ton of sense at a glance, so it's feasible that most familiars would actually be able to carry you, which is an interesting thing to consider. If you're not familiar with how carry weight works in D&D 5e, by the way, it's your strength score multiplied by 15. So in the case of the average halfling, it's like anyone with a score of 3 or greater really would be able to move a halfling around with virtually no problem. So it's, it is, it is, it is it is quite cool if you perceive it that way, you know. In terms of alignment, most halflings are lawful good. As a rule, they are good-hearted and kind, hate to see others in pain, and have no tolerance for oppression. That last part would likely lead to a call to adventure. Outside of that, you know, I guess they have a, a general whimsical nature to them that would probably lead to them leaving the home. 
but a more concrete call to adventure would be like it, for example their family was enslaved or something like that you know or they witnessed tyranny and they swore to an oath to um, eradicate it for lack of a better term there's a couple different ways you could approach that but it's I think that's the whole reason it's really there. Is they, they need to have a hook, you know? Now let's move on to their mechanics. In terms of ability score improvements, they gain a plus two to dexterity, which is absolutely fantastic for almost every class. Dexterity is one of those abilities where it affects a lot of what you can do in game and it will likely save your neck in some life or death scenarios especially once magic spells start getting more and more common and you have to make those deck saves more and more frequently in terms of speed they have a slightly reduced walking speed of 25 feet and in languages they can read speak and write common and halfling they will also gain access to halfling nimbleness you can move through the space of any creature that is of a size larger than yours, so anything larger than small in the halfling's case. Um, this also works fairly well with spells like Reduce, for example, that change the size of either your, or I guess Reduce slash Enlarge. So anything that has to deal with size, this is quite beneficial with. There are optional rules that allow you to kind of tumble through enemies and shove your way through them. However, if you're playing a strictly rules as written game, this is about as good as you can get. There's also no penalty incurred for doing this, which is also quite nice. So you don't have to worry about difficult terrain or anything like that. However, you may need to worry about an attack of opportunity, depending on how you go about it. And if you thought that was all, you'd be slightly mistaken. Um, they have some other traits worth discussing. The first of the traits is called Lucky. When you roll a 1 on a d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. This is what halflings are most well known for. If you combine this feature with the Bountiful Luck Racial Feat and the Lucky Feat, it becomes pretty obvious that you're not going to be rolling any ones. And you or your party for that matter, which is pretty impressive when you actually consider that there's a 5% odds of rolling a 1 and now that's no longer a thing, it just leads to a re-roll. I guess in most cases you do have to use the new roll or there's some form of cost with re-rolling it outside of that, but you know, it's pretty damn good. And if you stack this with the Divination Wizard, it's like, man, that's even better. And if you stack it again with the Celestial Sorcerer, then you know, it gets a little messed up too. So it's 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 really good. You know, and if you're using like the the one as a crit fail system, then it's even better because you're never really going to crit fail, or at least the odds of you doing so are incredibly low. And they also gain access to Brave, which next to Lucky is, you know, it's okay. And it's even advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Frightened is one of those conditions where you're likely going to see it pretty frequently at every level of play. It's a very common trait for a variety of creatures to have. There's also a handful of spells that utilize the Frightened Condition quite effectively, so it's a pretty pretty good thing to have advantage in as far as conditions are concerned. That being said though, you know, depending on what your role in the party may be and depending on what spells you have access to and what other class features you have, this might not be a huge deal, but it only takes one time for it to be useful, for it to be worth it because the Frightened Condition is pretty detrimental in a lot of circumstances. So, you know, it's okay for what it is. And that's really about it for the Halfling, so let's get to my personal thoughts. I've gone back and forth on why the Halfling isn't as popular as a lot of the other PHB races. And the main reason I can think of is it's just visually not a very appealing character to those who wish to pursue the hero archetype, you know? 
Like, they're always kind of cheery, and the odds of them really experiencing consistent hardship are pretty low, and the odds of them experiencing personal growth despite their long-lived lives are conceivably pretty low. It's, it's interesting. There's a lot you can do with a lot of the sub-races that really entrench the flavor of the halfling, or at least change it up significantly enough where you can expect a different kind of adventurer, but at a glance, you know, a lot of the artwork for them is pretty cheery, and it's them dancing, and it's like, yeah, it's really not what I imagine my badass character to be behaving like, and it doesn't help that a lot of the cheery role players tend to take it a little bit too far from time to time and annoy some other party members, so maybe that's a little bit to do with it as well. However, I'm not 100% certain about that last part. In any case, mechanically, they're quite good. A plus two bonus to, de to dexterity is always nice. Uh, halfling nimbleness is really cool if you're in a pinch. Lucky is just fantastic overall. Their racial feats seem to be pretty well thought out. And brave is nice to have around, if for no other reason. It reminds me a lot of the fey ancestry, just a little bit different you know it's it just helps you out with a condition that may or may not change the flow of battle if implemented at the right time so it's fairly similar in that regard in any case let me know what you think of the halfling down beneath in the comment section be sure to mention any thoughts questions comments or concerns you have regarding them and if you'd like to get access to a free one shot Go over to the Guild Hall's website, link in the description, uh, click on the job board, click whatever one shot you'd like, and then use code WELCOME to get yours for free. It's a pretty cool system. We also have another channel uh, where we're going to be going through an interactive D&D campaign. So if you have a Dungeons & Dragons itch that needs to be scratched, check that out. It's progressing fairly nicely as far as I can tell, so hopefully you'll enjoy it and keep an eye out for the pinned comment for that link. That being said, I hope you have a great day, and as always, happy adventuring.